one more, we'll do another wood load here. We're gonna do tougher holes. This comes 16 in the pack. So um, of course we use the 100 line weathering, uh, weather mix, and hopefully we can get some good loads out of this. Now for this project, you're gonna need a miter box set there. If you don't have a miter box or the saw, you can use a simple Zacto knife. Of course, you need your dowels here. These are a little hard. These harder than you know your balsa wood. Sand and paper. Scale ruler. And your car. You're gonna base your loads off. I got multiple cars here. The old Walker, the pulp wood cars, be these is. If I'm wrong, please let me know down in the comments below. But use this one to base most of the loads off. Now we're going to do telephone poles. So instead of having one continuous color, we're going to mix it up. So we go once again, we're going to use the from head of line, the driftwood there, light gray, Sandra Brown, and we got dark brown, and also we got the golden brown. So these the five colors we're going to use today on different loads. So we're going to take our car and get the sized up and see how long she have our load. So I'm going to put it at the zero here at this end and slide it up and see what we come up with. So we're saying it's about, about 60 HO scale feet. So I'm going to cut it down. Just a smidgen so I can have the car loads slide up and down freely. So your wooden dowels are extremely long. Of course, it won't fit inside the car. Super long. So we gotta do is of course cut it down. So we're gonna lay it down here at the zero. Slide it up. So 60 is very tight and this wooden dial is over 85 feet long in HO scale. So we're gonna come to the 60. I can see past this camera here is away. And around the 60, all you do is just lay it down here. You see that? Then you're just gonna roll it. This out the way. So you're just gonna roll it back and forth. This is a real wood, not balsa wood. This was a little bit, you know, it's harder than balsa wood. So it's gonna take a little effort. But if you use balsa wood, it'll be much easier to um, no, do this because you do this wood, real wood, or balsa wood. Hope you guys so roll it a couple times, roll it. So you gotta cut it all the way through just a little bit. You can see, let me see, see, make a little roof there. If you roll it, all you gotta do is like that, break it. And the sandpaper come in where you just sand it down. So that's that's how we're that's how you do it. I right, to make duplicates here. What I do is line up the end. Take the exacto blade and just make a little impression out the way and just roll it back and forth roll it back and forth a couple of times remember you don't have to go all the way through when you feel as though that you had enough just break off if it doesn't break clean as you want you always can go to plan b take your little cutters like so and this cut. Okay. And of course, hit up some sandpaper. And there you go, sand it down. Make it a bit better. If you don't want that little cut mark, I'll just leave it because it looked proto I mean, look prototypical to me as the machine came in and cut it down. But that just me, but you guys, you know, you can do your own thing. But since this already cut down look good, just 
lock it in the car. You just cut. It sits right in there. No problem. Now, let's say, you know, you got a modern box and that's take way too long for you. Each little stick will take about a minute to sides up, cut, and sand. So, you're going to take all your wooden dowels, some tape. So, you're going to try to set everything up nice and straight. Take a piece of tape here. No matter what tape. And just roll it. So now it's wrapped on both ends. You have the box here. Of course, you put this lip on the edge of the table so it makes it flush. You see that? Flush there. Take our dowels. Take the previous cut one here. Trying to show things lined up. It's good. Now on that one end here, place it down. So it's flush here. And slide the load to where you need to get to. Make sure it's in place. Take the saw. I'm gonna put it in the holes here on the slots. Then I'm gonna sl try to slide the load up to the pre-cut. There you go. So I feel that everything is lined up. Move it and start cutting. Nice clean cut there. Like so I'm gonna do this once again. Take the sandpaper, put the dowels down, and just sand them all at once. All right, look. What do you think? You look good for some telephone poles, right? Now, after an hour or so cutting away, just come with it. All them cut, all to the same size. Might be a little uh, variance in the middle, but if you want to save some time, you can do uh, two at a time. So, two 16 packs in here at one shot. Just gotta tape it and cut away. Then, here's the other parts here, so these gonna be loads for something else. Okay, all it's gonna be done within a matter of a few hours. Everything cut down to size. And next, you wanna bring in the weather mix. Went to the dollar store, picked these up for a buck. They're, uh, of course, they're deep. I wanna make sure that I can lay these guys in here a flat, have an even coat throughout. Can't put these in the bowl because of course they're too big to fit in the bowl. Remember, you gotta shake these before you use it. Get all the stuff ready to go in there. So you're gonna drop this golden brown first. Take them out there and uh, put them in a the pan here with a line with a, this is a dollar store once again. Got a dollar store pan, go get paper towel and let them dry for a little while. So 
see what happens. Bring the cars in to get loaded. Now we get the car spotted up to get loaded. So let's take a look at the final product we get for letting it sit for four hours in the Hunter Line weather mix. That's everything laid out as is for the colors. Five different colors today. Now these are just stuck in the bottle. They can see the uh, the differences in the time that you the cinnamon. So this goes here with the sandwood brown, sandalwood brown. This go to your golden brown. Focus. This one here goes to the light gray. This one here goes to the driftwood. And of course, this one go right here to your dark brown. So I'll show you in the little pictures that you can just dip it in, and this is what you get with brushing one or you can just let it soak like I did. In the soak, you're only losing about an ounce in this eight ounce bottle for letting the wood you know, soak. Then what's left over inside the container after you dump it in. And when you look at it, when you pour it in, you see that the wood sucks up the dye very well. So this is what you get. These are my telephone pole loads. I'm not gonna glue them together. I'm just going to lay them in there inside the car. You know, if I hopefully I don't have a derailment, they won't go all over the place. But if it do, it's easy to pick up. So it's real quick, cheap, $10 for a bottle of this. And the wood dolls is no more than two bucks at uh, Walmart. Remember, it's 16 coming to pack. It takes two packs of 16 to do one car. Plus, you have to cut it down. So the, the cut down is here. And this goes into another load also. So you get a lot of loads for uh, two packs. So here's the light gray mix. Just the test dial here. That's what it came in originally, and this will end up being. So it looks pretty good. Now there's the sandal wood here up close. Remember the test dial here. That's what it looks like now. Looks pretty good. Now this is the golden brown. And here's the test dial. It's pretty good, don't it? Hmm. Of course, we got the dark brown. It look like. Don't look bad at all. And also, you had the driftwood. This wouldn't look too bad. It definitely looked like the name driftwood. So I already got that loader ready to load up that car there. So I'm saying the small ones can be small loads that can be loaded up to like flat cars or even flat beds. I right, simply got it all loaded up. Let's get the next two empty cars.
So a full load plus car of 32 dollars. That's how much it weigh. Now we have the shorts here. Now there's 62 dollars in here. This is how much it weighs.